Hello Freaks, my name is Matt and joining me are my two best friends Nathan and Sue and in this episode we're going to be talking about the Australian horror classic, in quotation marks, Wolf Creek. Okay, so Wolf Creek, it's an Australian um, horror film that was made in 2005. It was written uh, co-produced and directed by Greg McLean and it stars John Jarrett. Um, so essentially it is a man in a ute um, picking up tourists and dispatching of them. That's kind mm. of the whole basis of it. Um, That's the short version. Right, but I mean I suppose the best horrors have the simplest ideas. Um, yeah. Only because when you get too convoluted and complicated, it turns into Saw Part 7. And you're like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so I, I like the simplicity of it and um, the slow build because um, you can't really talk about the plot without saying that there is 45 minutes at the beginning where there is no horror at all. Um, it's just character building, which some people don't like. Yeah, I, I like it. I think it's, it's not I, good. I actually think it's it's, my, it's main strength, to be honest. Exactly. Mm. I think you really care for those three characters. Well, I certainly do. Australians have these this tendency to not like our own culture and make <laughs> sort of makes us cringe. Um, but Wolf Creek surprisingly didn't make me cringe, and I actually liked those characters. They weren't just you know from the set of Neighbours or Home and Away. Um, yeah. They were sort of really, well-rounded characters, really, people that I could know. Yeah, really well-rounded. I thought very believable people well cast like to make a horror film where i like the characters so much that by the time the horror actually gets started i kind of don't want it to happen mm -hmm. as a horror fan that's pretty impressive stuff because we should be there going you know kill them yay like you do mm -hmm. in teen slasher that are you know slightly um more um quick to get to the action you are sort of yeah let's get into it and it's all fun and games whereas this film i was like i I just want them to go on their journey and have a nice time. <laughs> See, to me, to me, that's a common misconception, like, and it's a mistake that producers of horror movies um, have made since the 90s, that people just want to see Jason, Michael, and Freddy Krueger, like, as the heroes, and they don't want to see any character development in the actual hero characters, and we yep. just want to see them as, as cannon fodder for us to watch get you know, slashed and torn to pieces. And I think that's totally ridiculous. While we do, you know, in a strange way, want to see Jason, like we look forward to seeing Jason or, or Michael Myers or um, the killer in this film, but you want to see characters in peril that you care about. Characters Absolutely. that, um, you know, you're going to feel bad that they're getting slaughtered. Um, you don't want to see just some moron um, on the screen. So I exactly. think that's what Wolf Creek's strength is, is that it's um, got characters that you're actually sad to see get, in, get put in this situation. Yeah, it makes yeah. you care. Um, I know for me when I'm watching real something, if, if I don't care, if I've got no emotional attachment to the character or what's happening on the screen of the story, it's like I might as well turn it off. It's boring. Yeah. Particularly given that this is based on real things. This is based on... A, you know, real killers who did do these things to real people, um, it would seem almost disrespectful to just make them caricatures to be lined up and killed. Most of the things that were done to the people in this film were things that Ivan Milat had done to backpackers mm. um, in Blangelo Forest. So it seems it would be almost more wrong to be really, yeah, you know, get her in the spy because someone... Yeah. That actually did happen, so yeah. it, I'm glad they treated it with the respect that they did. Yeah, mm. yeah, it really gives it a, a, another dimension, doesn't it? When it is based in reality, and it, it's not one of those empty things like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, based on a true story. This literally um, is taken from the pages of police reports. Yeah. yeah, which I guess makes it so much more horrific as well, because it's more relatable, and it's it's like Sue said before, it's it's very simplified but it's sometimes it's the most simplified ideas the most relatable ones that are most scary as well excellent all of them the uh i guess the the three backpackers they're all very relatable as well and yep. then um john jarrett's mick he was relatable as well but sort of creepy like if you met him he wasn't like a, a 
clean cut, all right, here's the villain type character in that you just know that something is off about him, something not right. And if you met him, you'd just feel unsettled, which I guess what happens with the characters to begin with. They can sense something's not quite right with this guy, but they've got no idea where it's going to go from there. The performances were perfect across the board, if you ask me. Those accents that the girls did were spot on. The, you know, the, the Aussie friend of theirs was super sweet and him and Liz getting together on top of that rock, I just loved that. I was like, oh, I want their romance, that's so sweet and it felt real. Um, and then Mick, I thought that, I mean, obviously that's an iconic character now. Um, but what I liked about it is that it totally played up with those Aussie cliches, the whole that's not a knife and the lovable larrikin. <laughs> You know, that laconic guy who's just going to show up and fix your car because country people are so friendly and totally turns that on its head. Mm. I thought that was really cool. That scene when they're at the, um, yeah, where they're at the fireplace, at the bonfire or whatever, and um, the Aussie guy says something that offends Mick and he just stares at him for a long time. Oh, yeah. it's so uncomfortable. It's yeah, so unnerving. And this was a, um, a bit of against type for John Jarrett as well. Up until this point, he played sort of um, lovable characters. He was, you know, the clean-cut guy. Uh, mm -hmm. And to see him playing this sort of really convincing, nasty role, and everyone in Australia knows who Ivan Milat is, and to see him really pulling it off and this Ivan Milat sort of look-alike um, was really disconcerting for me. But the three, I guess, main characters other than Mick as well, they all felt believable. But none of them felt like stereotypes or cutouts that you've just taken from one movie and put into another one. Mm -hmm. They all seem like real people, um, which I think really helped connect as well. And, and Sue, you mentioned the two girls, the accents. Until you mentioned it, I didn't even know they weren't Australian. They did such yeah, a good job. Yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I thought the direction was really good. It uh, managed to, it was a beautiful to look at, but it managed to avoid a lot of the Aussie sort of cliches and being predictable mm -hmm. as well. When even on the way into town when they meet the, uh, I guess, the locals at the, the truck stop, yes, that sort of veered into sort of cliche just a little bit, but at the same time, they were still believable and, and real. I just thought it was really beautifully put together, really beautifully shot, which I guess mm -hmm. made all the horror bits all the more disturbing as well because it just looked real. You're right, the cinematography was beautiful all the way through. Well, like the landscapes, even when you were like, oh my God, run! Oh, beautiful landscape. <laughs> <laughs> you just couldn't help it. So yeah, it was still, I mean, we do live in a beautiful country. You, you do sometimes forget that and then you, it's nice to be reminded even while you're being scared. Yeah. Well, it was filmed in um, out the state that um, Nathan and I live in, in South Australia, like so, Bits of it seem extremely familiar to me, like the jetty uh, in that family's uh, video clip and uh, parts of it looked like it was filmed around Port Augusta, uh, around the Iron Triangle sort of area where I was born. So it, it seemed very familiar, which made, maybe makes me like the film even more. But I think, yeah. like I said, we have so many amazing films that are shot here, but I feel like this was somehow got added something different. Mm. Um, well, I think it, a lot of Australian impressive. films, they're sort of made and they can feel a bit sort of cheap, like they're only made for like a local audience almost as if they didn't try very hard. But this is this is world class, it just happens yeah, to be great. Australian. Yeah, or they're made class. where they're almost trying to sell Australia, like they're yeah. like the tourism board sponsored them or something and we're going to have sunset views of kangaroos running across the road and shit. And it's like, I would rather you just told a good story and it just happened to be set in Australia and these things are incidental rather than, um, you know, really highlighting, oh, it's beautiful down here, come and live in Australia, because I think they're forgetting the whole point of films. Yeah. I also think because we don't get enough funding, but we still try to sort of do Hollywood-style films, a lot of times they just don't work. We can't, yeah. we can't live up to that. We're better sticking with it where we are, which is why horror works well, and particularly horrors like this, because... It's not like they needed lots of fancy sets or anything. Um, and it was meant to look kind of dirty and grimy. And so it fit in well with what I'm imagining budget would have been. Mm. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's why I'm surprised that we don't have more horror films shot here. Like, it's such a great landscape for horror films.
Let's talk about what we think of the film overall, and we'll give it a score. And Nathan, do you want to start off? Let's give it a score out of 10. Uh, what do you give Wolf Creek um, out of 10? Okay, look, overall, overall, I didn't think it was a particularly fun film and not a particularly pleasant film, but it was really well made. It was really tense and really horrific. Um, so, yeah, ultimately, it was, a, it was a good horror because it's horrific. So my total score, taking into consideration all of that, I think I'd give it eight as a horror. Eight, that's a solid score. Yeah. And um, so what would you give it out of ten? I'll probably give it a ten, you know. Ten out of ten. I think so, because I'm trying to think of is there anything I would change or anything I wasn't happy with. I kind of think it's a perfect horror film, so I'd, yeah, I'd probably give it a ten. Fair enough. Wow, that's, that's an amazing score. And um, for me, um, like Sue, I think it's a pretty solid film. It is hard to fault any of it. And the only thing that I would sort of fault it is that it's, while it's an enjoyable film, it's not a film that I revisit often simply because it's a <laughs> film that haunts me. Mm. Um, so, like Nathan made the point, it's not a thoroughly enjoyable film in that way. You don't enjoy <laughs> watching it. Um, but I do enjoy watching it because it gives me such um, a huge reaction. So, yeah. I'm going to give it a, a 9 out of 10. Because I think good. it's pretty awesome. So, so it's a successful scores, horror. Awesome. Yeah, very successful. So um, I guess asking the question, do we think uh, this is a classic? Uh, it is a new film. Do you think it's a, a horror classic? Is it a? Um, I guess it fits in with um, the slasher genre, like I said at the beginning, with you know Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Halloween, Friday the Thirteenth. Do you think it fits uh, well against those films as a classic? Definitely, it's a it's a modern classic. Yeah, I agree. I mean, obviously, I think it's perfect. So, yeah, yeah, I think it's a classic. I do think um, it is the kind of film that you could watch 10, 20 years and it would still be effective and chilling and creepy because it works on basic horror. It's not about what's flavour of the month or anything like that. It's what is always going to scare people. So yeah. for that reason alone, yeah, I think it's a classic. Excellent. Excellent. So we thoroughly enjoyed Wolf Creek. Is that simply because we're Australians? Well, <laughs> let us know in the comments below what you think of Wolf Creek. Uh, you can also connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. And if you like this, give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe because we've got a lot more coming this way. We've also just recently uploaded the top five moments of Wolf Creek, so check that out as well. Until next time, though, we'll see you. Bye. Bye. Bye.